Hi, I'm Chao Wei Huang from the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine and from the Frederick Health Hospital. Today we're going to talk about uh, what to do with side branches uh, during PCI. When uh, can you leave them alone and when should you wire them? So we have a 50-year-old woman uh, with hypertension uh, who presented to her cardiologist with uh, classic anginal symptoms uh, despite medications. Her uh, nuclear stress test uh, showed anterior ischemia. On cath, her RCA was small and non-dominant, and the circ had only mild disease. Uh, the LED is uh, shown here. Um, we see uh, two severe lesions in the mid-LED, uh, one uh, immediately adjacent to a moderate-sized uh, diagonal branch, and the second one uh, more distally. Uh, the diagonal itself looks okay, and there is only some mild disease at its ostium. So um, we decide on a, a provisional stenting uh, approach uh, for the mid-LED, but um, here's the dilemma. Uh, would you wire uh, that diagonal branch as well? So um, taking a step back, uh, you might ask, uh, why would we even consider uh, wiring a diagonal branch? After all, if the side branch goes down after stenting the main branch, uh, you've already trapped your side branch wire, so you can't use it to reopen the side branch. Um, but there are some benefits. Um, first, um, the side branch wire does preserve access to the vessel. So sometimes side branches go down uh, with pre-dilating and before stenting the main branch. Um, so in that scenario, uh, that side branch wire will allow you to get back into the side branch quickly and easily. Second, um, the side branch wire marks the position of the side branch. So even when trapped by the main branch stent, uh, you can still use it to locate where to poke with your second wire and get back uh, into the side branch uh, more quickly. And third, um, if the side branch uh, does go down due to shifting of soft plaque or thrombus, sometimes just jiggling or spinning or, or, or withdrawing the side branch wire, it's sometimes uh, sufficient uh, to uh, reestablish a channel. Obviously, there are also drawbacks. Uh, dissecting the side branch is the most common one, uh, especially in a small and tortuous uh, vessel. Uh, to decrease that risk, uh, I try to avoid using uh, hydrophilic wires uh, for the side branch whenever possible. It's also theoretically possible that the side branch uh, wire can get stuck. Uh, but this is very rare. And so I generally uh, do remove the side branch wire before post-dilating the main branch uh, and also uh, before laying a second layer of stent, especially if the main branch uh, lesion is uh, uh, complex or uh, calcified. So um, here are my personal rules of thumb uh, for when I think about wiring the side branch. Um, I tend to wire the side branch if it is large enough to potentially accommodate the stent, so uh, two millimeters or more in diameter, and if there is a significant osteostenosis. I also tend to wire the side branch if the main branch has a lot of thrombus or if there's a complicated lesion. These are scenarios where um, there could be significant uh, plaque shifting uh, that could be possible. And conversely, I tend to leave the side branch alone when it's small, disease-free, or when the main branch lesion looks smooth and uncomplicated. And as it turns out, there's actually some evidence supporting these uh, rules of thumb, uh, which I'll go over in a little bit. So anyway, in our case, uh, the uh, diagonal looks like it's big enough to accommodate the stent, but the ostium looks pretty good. And the LED lesion really doesn't look uh, particularly complex either. So uh, my decision was to actually uh, leave the diagonal alone and just wire the LED. But as it often turns out, our first wire just sailed right down into the diagonal. So I just decided to leave it, leave it there. And we got a second wire down the LED and we uh, pre-dilated with a 3.0 balloon and stented it with a 3.5 by 38 uh, DES. So uh, here we are after the stent went in, um, the diagonal stayed open and pretty much unchanged and the LED looks pretty good. So all we had to do now was to uh, remove the diagonal wire, post dilate, do a little OCT and, and we're home free. So as planned, uh, we uh, removed the diagonal wire and post dilated with a 4.0 um, NC balloon. The uh, patient developed a lot of chest pain uh, during the balloon inflation, which we expect but the chest pain persisted well after we uh, deflated the balloon. Uh, we took a shot, and as you can see, uh, the diagonal is now occluded. 
Um, I, I did a lot of uh, second guessing after this. Uh, should I have left the diagonal wire in place after I post dilated? Well, frankly, I'm not sure. I've, I've generally removed the side branch wire before post dilating uh, to reduce the chance of the wire uh, getting stuck. So uh, rewiring that diagonal turned out to be quite a challenge. Uh, that sharp turn in the LED just proximal to the diagonal kept biasing uh, the wire away uh, from the ostium of the diag, and the uh, freshly stent that we just placed uh, really didn't help matters. I tried the same BMW wire first. Um, and I find that sometimes a wire that has already been in a vessel tends to find uh, its way back in, but that didn't work. I tried uh, increasingly hydrophilic wires, a Pro Water, and then a Pilot 50, um, but those uh, really didn't work either. And meanwhile, the patient was uh, getting more biophoretic and kept on moaning and squirming around the table in pain. And I was finally able to wire the side branch using a uh, dual lumen catheter. Now, these catheters have an uh, RX port that goes over your main branch wire, but it also they also have a side port more proximally uh, through which you can place a second wire to access the side branch. Um, you really need to use these catheters, but when you need them, uh, you really need them. Anyway, once the uh, diagonal was wired, uh, we gently dilated it uh, with a uh, two-o balloon. Um, there was a lucency uh, in the LED just proximal uh, to our previous stent, which we uh, stented with another uh, 3.5 millimeter DES. So uh, here we are after stenting. Um, the LED looks good. Uh, we got flow back in the diagonal, uh, but the flow is still very, very sluggish. And it does look like there might be a focal dissection or a severe spasm in the mid segment of the diagonal. We gave uh, nitro, but uh, that really didn't do anything. Um, at this point, um, her chest pain uh, was getting better, uh, so we decided to stop and uh, declare victory. Uh, we, admitted, uh, we admitted her, uh, the patient, to the ICU uh, for, uh, for observation. So in the ICU, her chest pain uh, resolved uh, a couple of hours later, but very surprisingly, her troponin came back at 140 the following morning, which is far higher than we had expected from just a little diagonal. So we took her back uh, for a relook uh, the next day. And as you can see, the LED is wide open and that diagonal thankfully is uh, wide open as well. And so either the uh, diagonal dissection had healed overnight or it was indeed just spasm. Uh, we never could explain why the troponin got so high. Um, her echo uh, showed uh, preserved EF without any wall motion abnormalities and, and there was no uh, pericardial effusion. Um, the remainder of her hospital stay was uneventful and uh, she uh, went home the following day. So um, is there any data out there for when um, the side branch should be wired in a bifurcation case? Well, um, as it turns out, uh, very recently uh, in 2022, uh, there was a retrospective study out of Korea uh, that was uh, published in Jack uh, Cardiovascular Interventions uh, involving almost 1,900 patients uh, that looked at the effects of wiring the side branch in provisional uh, bifurcation PCI cases. And uh, here's the punchline. Uh, this is the figure of uh, the likelihood that the side branch becomes occluded uh, when the side branch is wired, and that's in blue, versus when the side branch is not wired, and that is in orange, all as a function of how tight the main branch and side branches are. And so the authors found that when the main branch is not particularly tight at the bifurcation of the side branch, then wiring the side branch is not beneficial. Uh, but wiring the side branch did lead to less side branch occlusion when the main branch has more than a 60% stenosis at the site of the bifurcation. And the benefit of wiring the side branch is amplified when both the side branch and the main branch have stenoses of more than 60% either bifurcation. When both branches are stenosis, um, you run an 18% risk that the side branch will go down if you don't wire the side branch. And that risk goes down to just 6% if you do wire the side branch. And looking at the lesion length of the main branch, they also found a trend towards benefit if the lesion at the bifurcation in the main branch is longer, uh, more than 10 millimeters. 
All right, um, so take home messages. Um, so in bifurcations uh, for which uh, you are contemplating a provisional stenting strategy, uh, there are several considerations uh, for when um, the side branch uh, should be wired. First, um, the side branch should be large enough. This is more of a rule of thumb, but I generally start worrying uh, about side branches when they uh, get to be two millimeters or larger, uh, big enough to fit a stent. Uh, next, uh, we've seen that there is benefit to wiring the side branch if both the main branch and side branch are at 60% stenosis or more at the bifurcation. Uh, wiring the side branch in these cases lowers the risk of side branch occlusion from 18% to about 6%. Um, there is also a trend towards benefit for wiring the side branch if the main branch lesion is more than a centimeter long at the bifurcation. In addition, I also consider uh, wiring the side branch if the chance of plaque shifting is high, uh, such as in cases of highly thrombotic or ulcerated lesions in the main branch. Thank you for watching.